Today on the Arts for Life Virtual Music Studio, I'm going to show you how to play the spoons and a little ditty that I wrote to go along with it. So stay tuned, grab some spoons, and I'll show you how to make music with these. Let's get creating. Hey everyone, my name is Marty and I'm the music teacher with Arts for Life at Brenner Children's Hospital. Welcome to our virtual studio where we believe that art is for everyone. Today, we're going to learn how to play the spoons. And it makes my heart smile just even thinking about it. How much fun is that to play an, a thing you eat with? That's so cool. Uh, and a common household item. And these are, this is a real musical instrument. These are, these are uh, very popular in Appalachia and folk music. So. Uh, there you go. It's a real instrument lying around the house everywhere or in restaurants or whatever. You can find some spoons and we can do some jamming. Let me tell you a little bit about what to look for in a good spoon. Any spoon will work. That's the first, that's the first point. Uh, even two spoons that don't match. However, it is nice if your spoons are the same because it's easier to hold two things that are the same. They kind of balance out. So that's one thing to look for, two spoons that are the same. Uh, but not impossible to do with different spoons as well. But probably take a little bit more uh, practice and finesse in getting, getting the technique down. The other thing to look for with your spoons um, is with the handle. <clears throat> the handle, you, I, it's ideal if there's a slight taper out. Most spoons actually are made this way, but if it tapers out, you're going to be able to, it's not going to slip out of your hand as easily, so you're going to grip it a little bit better and... Uh, so that and that's helpful but again it's not impossible to play with a straight spoon now I went out of my way I went and looked at a whole variety of spoons for this video to see what the cheapest uh, least durable spoon was that I could find and you know I like I said you don't have to have anything fancy you don't have to have platinum gold spoons or diamond plated spoons is that a thing um, you just these are plastic these are great um, and what's neat is the different, being plastic, you get a different sound. If you use metal spoons, you're going to get a, a different sound, which is kind of fun and neat. And there's even, I've even seen wooden spoons being used, uh, if you can find that, some that fit in your hand well. So any spoon will work. Uh, they just ideally are identical, and they have a slight taper on the handle. And by the way, these, these are so cheap. I've had these for the past three weeks, and I've been carrying them in my back pocket just to, just to really give them a rugged test. And you can see, if you look closely from where I've been practicing, look at that diligent practice paying off in those beautiful little cracks on the back of the spoon. But guess what? They're still holding up. And that's, that's what's amazing about uh, these. Uh, even the cheapest spoons, like you can go to the cafeteria, those are higher quality spoons than these, I guarantee it. Um, oh, even cooler, if you're in a cafeteria setting and you find a spork, you can say, I play the spork. That's like high class spoon playing right there. Anyway, so um, these spoons, like I said, they've been in my back pocket. They have not broken, and I've been beating the fool out of them, really. So uh, they can really, they can really um, dish it out, if you know what I'm saying. Da -da <laughs> anyway, so uh, enough of that. Uh, so here we go. These are the spoons that I'm going to use today. And I need to first show you how to hold them. The first step is the top spoon. So you want to <clears throat> hold the top spoon. If you've ever dug with, dug into the dirt with um, a, a shovel, a little trowel type of shovel, uh, you hold it like this. It's kind of the same idea, but you're not going to grip down on it with these fingers. You're just grabbing it with the thumb and the index finger. So place it on top of the index finger, slightly turned in like that, and then place the thumb right down over it. And you don't need a whole lot back in here. I can have even less than that if I want. You can, can you see that? There we go. And so you don't need a whole lot in there. And the second spoon, there's two uh, techniques that people use. Some people like, they use two fingers, they put two fingers in between. And if you have smaller hands, uh, that might be, you know, something that you want to consider. My finger, my hands are kind of big. And so I'm, I'm going to just go with one finger in between. But the way you place the second spoon is, I'm going to slide up to the camera, turn around a little bit so you can see. But you place the second spoon um, under the finger, and the, and the backs of the spoons will be touching. Not touching, but 
facing one another. Um, you don't want the spoons like scooping each other in the same direction. You want them both facing the part you scoop with the, on the bottom one going down, the scoop on the top one going up. And so, and then um, you're going to hold this spoon in there like that with these fingers. And this is what's, this is the trickiest part of playing spoons is keeping them in here and not, uh, not having them slip, like wander around and slip around and get caught on one another. Sometimes when you're playing, they'll do that. You have to like pull them back out from each other. So this is the technique that, this is the first thing you're going to want to get really good at is holding the spoons, uh, you know, basically straight together. Together, they start diverging, you know, then you have problems. So, so this is where the first level of practice you're going to want to uh, work on is keeping the spoons straight. And I'll try to, I'll show you. And if I'm, if I'm too loose with the way I'm holding it, they're going to fall apart like that and get, it's not going to sound good, I'm going to have a mess. So I want to try to keep them on top of each other and get a nice sound. Check that out. Click, click, click. Yeah. All right. Okay. The other thing is you want to make sure there's a little space in between. You don't want them touching. Watch if I hold them too tightly and they're touching. Listen to the sound. No sound. Maybe some here and there, but not much. What makes the sound with the spoons is are the it's when the two pieces bounce off of one another. That's what's making your sound. So you want a little space in between. So when you get I would first begin by practicing keeping them nice and straight like this. And then just tap them. Tap them and see if you can keep them straight while tapping. Just a steady tap like that. Uh, once you get good at that, maybe try tapping while counting to four and putting emphasis on uh, some of the different beats, maybe on the one. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. That's a good place to start. That one might throw them off a little bit, and so then you, you're going to want to adjust and, until you get comfortable with the strong pulse. The softer ones generally aren't going to slip away because you're not banging too hard. But uh, when you bang a little harder, it tends to uh, it tends to drift if you're not holding well. <clears throat> so I want to I'm going to show you a song today, uh, and we'll cut to do that here soon. But uh, I'm going to show you a few different ways you can play along with the song and a few techniques that we'll use in the song. And you can do this in other songs that you enjoy too that have fun rhythms. And so. The first one, it, it's basically that steady downbeat. You, so you hit it against your knee. And if you really want to make it sound interesting, put a little more weight on beat two and beat four. So one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. See how much more interesting that is? Soft, loud, soft, loud, soft. Loud, soft, loud. So you get some nice dy dynamic variation there. Um, if, if you want to take it to the next level, what we want to do is add this, the, the other hand. So if you're right-handed, you're going to hold these in the right hand, the, the moving ones. If you're le left-handed, you'll hold them, you'll be opposite to me. Um, so whatever your non-dominant hand is, mine is my left, I'm right-handed, is going to go uh, above the spoons like that and then I'm going to come back up and hit the spoons on my hand too. So one and and these all every time it hits the hand, the stationary hand, that's we call that and. That's called the upbeat. And it's easy to see that cuz you're going up to hit it. So down, up, down, up, down, up, down, up and we'll call the upbeats ands. So if we do our our count and we hit when we hit this, we we say and in between the numbers. Here we go. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and like that. Now, what I said before about beats two and beats four, um, putting an emphasis on those, listen to the difference. So here it is without emphasis. One and two and three and four and one, two and three, four. Now, with the emphasis on two and four, it makes it just more exciting. Listen. One and two and three and 
four, So you can hear how, how it kind of gives it a musical quality rather than just a steady, almost like a clock. Tick tock, tick tock. Now this is, this feels like something you could dance to. Okay, so one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and. We're gonna add something else. So that was your, that's your basic uh, method of playing the spoons. This is all downbeat, and then you've got your upbeat. But I also want to show you. I, I hear it called different things. I'm just gonna call it a roll. So it's where you slide the spoons across the fingers, like that. You, the let the the non-dominant hand, the hand that you're using for the stationary part, you're going to. Uh, Spread the fingers apart slightly. You don't want them like super far apart. You just want them kind of as even as you can and quickly, and but still relaxed, not real stiff, just real, just nice, nice and steady. Um, so you hold them like that, and you slide the spins across like that, and then land on your knee after you do it. I'll show you from the side like that, and so I like that. Since we've got the, the strong emphasis happening on two and four, I like to throw that in for beats one and three. So listen to this. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and one and two and three and four. And then you have a really cool rhythm. And that's the rhythm I want to use and I'm going to use in the song coming up. But you don't have to do that one. I would recommend starting with this. Uh, here's the song. Let me get my key. So, do do do. So, so it goes. I wrote this song. So I'm gonna have to read the lyrics. I don't have it memorized. I wrote it literally not too long ago. <laughs> and so it goes. Woke. I woke up this fine morn of June. I came down from my bedroom. So. I'm just playing this very steadily, ba -ba -ba -dum, ba -dum, ba -dum, like that. Now that's the that's level one. I would practice the song doing that first, so I, and make sure you're feeling the beat nice and strongly. And then once you get comfortable doing it that way, try putting the emphasis on two and four. One and two and three and four. One and two and three and four. Bum bum ba -dum, bum bum bum. Bum, 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 like that. Once you're comfortable putting the emphasis in all downbeats, add the upbeat. One and two and three and four. 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 Like that. Now, if you're really feeling fancy and you've been doing all your diligent practicing and you're ready to do this, this, the, the roll in, incorporated into the rest of the mix, then this is how it would fit. By the way, I, I left a tip out. When you do the roll, I think when you're playing the normal way, having them perfectly the same length out from your hand is okay. But when you do the roll, I like to extend the one on the thumb side, the up side, a little bit further. Because when you when I'm rolling, my hand is slightly angled. I just feel like it grabs the spoons better. So I have that slight extension of the top one right there from the bottom when you do the roll. So this is how we go in the song. Okay. That's how it works. Yeah, so next we'll uh we'll do the song. Okay. So now we're going to put uh all these awesome rhythms that we've worked on to to work in actual music. So I wrote a song just for this to utilize these rhythms that we worked on today and I call it this of course the spoon song and it goes like this. <clears throat> we'll start with our rhythm. One and two and three and four and one and two and three and four and keep it going. Woke up this fine morn of June 
I came down from my bedroom. Flakes filled my bowl to consume. But by golly, where's my spoon? Where's my spoon? Oh, where's my spoon? Was it blasted to the moon? How to get there, should I assume? Hmm. Maybe on a hot air balloon. Maybe. Who knows how high those go? Have you ever been to the moon? I haven't. Here we go. Come about lunchtime on this noon. Went from class to the lunchroom. Soup filled my bowl to consume. But by golly, where's my spoon? Oh, such a gloom. I can't find my spoon. Could it be in King Tut's tomb? How to get there, should I assume? Hmm. Maybe it was stolen by a crazy baboon. I wouldn't give a twin of baboon his bananas. Even if he had my spoon, he can have it. Here we go. Lack of food making me a little loon. Dinner time now and I've turned to goon. Feed me a mushroom, I'll eat a prune. Anything where I don't need no spoon. From morn to moon, I've lost my spoon. Not sure no more if it's worth pursuing. How this spoon turned me buffoon. Wait a minute. How'd I play this tune? Oh, by golly. There's my spoon. Wasn't that just the most awesome fun to play music with a common household item like the spoon? Wow. <laughs> Who knew, right? Um, well, thank you so much for joining me today in the Arts for Life virtual studio. Uh, I hope you had a great time. I know I had a great time uh, playing the spoons. And if you did, and you have some fun story regarding your spoon playing, or you even capture a great video uh, of your home family spoon orchestra jamming along to the video. That would be amazing to see and feel free to comment or place those videos or pictures in the comments below. Uh, and as always, remember art is for everyone. Thanks for joining me. Take care.